four, 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 three, 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 two, 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 one, one, one. And it's a me, a Michael Stu, with a very, very last minute unboxing of the Elgato Stream Deck, as you can see in that picture in picture. Everybody can hear me okay? And whoever's here live right now, please say hi. And for the people that are wa watching this after the fact, please say hi in the comment section as well. So the El Elgato Stream Deck uh, says that it will evolve your content. It is very confusing what the heck this thing is. I know that is for streaming and I see a lot of pretty buttons on there, but uh, at first I was like, is this like a really easy way to put in HDMI and then switch in between sources like an AT ATEM, Blackmagic ATM? But I saw that was just a hundred and a fifty dollar. That is really cheap for an ATEM, so, but it turns out that it's not really that. But it is very extremely useful for your live streams. And they have a little video showing why. Let's uh, let's actually take a look at this video as I talk rudely over it. So it's being all fancy and everything about its design and it does look like a really cool and simple design of a bunch of buttons. Uh, but essentially what it's really meant for is to control the live streams that you're streaming from your computer through a computer app such as OBS, Twitch, or you know, in my case, Ecamm. And it's you see it's marketed towards gamers that need a really quick, easy way while gaming to switch uh, to different features of uh, whatever the platform they're streaming on. For example, they could show themselves picture in picture. They could show you know Twitter responses, comments. They could actually send out Twitter announcements of them live streaming, and it looks like you could you know put little interesting things on there uh, on yourself as well as show chat comments and everything and all these buttons have their own little screen on there that actually are customizable for each function that you add it is actually from this video pretty damn cool um, I wish they would talk more about people that are not necessarily streaming games uh, but actually this is what we're gonna look at today which is um, how we're going to be using it actually for live streaming for a show like this. So it, uh, you know, evolve your content and it has all the features in there. Studio power at your fingertips. Of course, it's not an ATM, as I mentioned. Uh, compatible with your preferences. Um, the customization on your, your terms is what they advertise. It works on Mac and Windows. So whether you're on OBS on Mac, Ecamm on Mac, or OBS on Windows, it works. Now, I, ha I have to say I cheated a little bit. I already opened this. So <gasps> all these reactions are fake. <laughs> but actually, my original uh, instinctual reaction was that, dude, this is much smaller than I expected because I was expecting for it to fill the box sideways, but no, it is, this is tiny. It's so cute. It's extremely cute. So let me take it out. Uh, let me take this manual out. Who wants to read a manual? Now it has its own detachable stand. Well, it's more like a stand that just, you could use it or not. You can see here, it's tiny. Look at my hand right here, but look at how small it is. It, it fits like this on the palm of my hand and I have a very average size hand. So if you're a big honking basketball player, this thing will just be literally in the palm of your hand. It, 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 that surprised me. Now it has a little grippy uh, pads on the bottom so you could just use it as is, but if it's kind of sit in front of you, it's gonna be hard to see the buttons on there. Now there is a little stand to tilt it and uh, it looks like they have a bunch of settings here, a lot of bunch of notches here. But in actuality, uh, there are two stand pieces or choices. So that doesn't adjust the height so much. What you actually want, if you wanted to lean further back, is to swing these guys out and then put that in. So that's more lean back, lean back. And then you have it visible in front of you if it's a, uh, you know, if it's a little closer, if it's further back than you probably wanted to tilt up a little bit more, but it's meant to be comfortable within reach. You don't have to look at your computer. You don't have to switch apps to your streaming app. If you're in the middle of another app, you just press a button. Now it's USB, it's not wireless. Uh, the Stream Deck also has a phone app that you subscribe to that has the exact same functions, but uh, some people uh, like me will just love the physical buttons. Now, just to give you a sense of the physical buttons and how they click, they're kind of like, um, what do you call them? Chocolate bar 
uh, keys as as nerds would call them or something. I don't know. It, it, I see people are watching. Please say hi in the comments, in the chat, I mean. But if you actually have a hollow table, which um, I don't know how many people would. Uh, let me zoom in on that. The buttons, zip buttons, uh, may echo. This may not make any matter to people who game with headsets or whatever, but if you are using certain mics that pick up things really easily, you may hear that. By itself, not that noisy. On a, a, a more hollow-ish table like this IKEA table, maybe a, a little bit more annoying. So um, one of the things that make this thing so powerful is the app. So we're gonna actually plug this in and this is thing is really nothing without the app that controls it and customizes it. And the customization is actually pretty impressive. Do I realize there's a live stream of Roger Deakins going on right now? No, I don't. Is that why nobody is <laughs> back to, you don't have to watch right now, Trevor, but thank you for saying hi. I really appreciate it. I I love you. All right, let's go to the Elgato app. And then you can see that we have the Stream Deck app. Let me move that a little bit to the side. And then I have um, the actual picture in picture here so you can see what's happening. Now it defaulted into uh, my already pre-set up presets here. But I wanna show you what it looks like when you actually first start with a clean slate. It is uh, empty and you can see here, it reflects everything that is on this app instantaneously. It's really cool. And, and so once you actually start uh, putting in options over here, now, if you're a gamer, you have little uh, options right here. For live streamers out there that use OBS, this is gonna be a lot more useful right here. So scenes, the main uh, purpose for people using OBS would be switching in between scenes. So you could drag in and you could notice right here, let me enlarge this a little bit more. It's picture in picture. It actually live updates here, which I think is baller uh, USB, but really powerful here. All right, and another scene and another scene. And then you could uh, change uh, mixer settings. You could choose to record as you're capturing. Uh, let's see, you could play an audio clip. You could stop playing an audio clip. You could play a video clip. Uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, you could add a bunch of buttons on here. Now, in order to customize like what scenes that you're actually uh, switching to, there's your settings over here. So you could uh, choose a collection to first start with. Uh, oh, thanks, Trevor. Uh, Trevor said that you're as big as Roger Deakins to some people, right? Why, why? Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that, that you're, you're so sweet uh, there. Wait, is it to you or? You're talking about other people. I don't know. That Yeah, you could customize within this little thing down here, which I'm sorry, Trevor, but I'm gonna hide you and your really awesome icon over there. And then here, uh, you could choose even choose the source that you have already loaded. You have to preload a lot of these. However, I'm using Ecamm. So Ecamm is included in here uh, for those people that love Ecamm. I love Ecamm. There's some things I hate about it, but whatever. Uh, it's cool. I have already paid for it. Anyway, so I'm going to drag run scene in here. It looks like you could have multiple apps in here. And you can see that it's kind of meta. You're seeing uh, stuff that I am running right now. So as Ecamm is running, I'm dragging in scenes. So here I'm gonna actually go to a profile. You can have different profiles that you set up and quickly switch to depending on if you're uh, if you're both a gamer and a live stream TV show person. So Ecamm Live, here we go. So here's all the scenes that I would want. And this could be interesting because I'm gonna be using this live in front of you, which is also controlling the stream. Uh, and that's that's gonna be kind of trippy. So here, let me go ahead and uh, it's hard for me to see the buttons from here. So my head might come in and ooh, what am I looking at? So if I tap on main, uh, you could uh, thankfully I have the picture in picture set up already. So here uh, I tapped on that and immediately responded. And then I tap on the overhead view, immediately responded. Tap on the split view, immediately responded. And then let's go to the website again immediately responded and then let's go back to the overhead and actually see that it actually updates to what you know it was last switched to and in some cases uh watch as i wave my hand here okay so the one that is live actually updates its icon 
as you go. So that's pretty trippy, right? It's like a picture in picture in picture. So, uh, and over here as well, and you can see my hand hovering over it and the icon updating as well. I just think that is really cool. Um, it, 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 and it helps with your memory as well. It's like, okay, that was the last thing I saw. And then you could just take a really quick glance and see, uh, know which button to press. And also you could do video playback and make sure that you can hear me. Okay, so this is a little test that I actually did uh, with um, Marcus uh, for the Vazen 40 millimeter. But the thing is that you cannot control your playback. They don't give you any options of like what to fast forward, to rewind or whatever. Uh, you actually have to still go to your computer and start winding and rewinding. Have, I have to use, I have to use that to rewind and fast forward you know, for the videos that I show about my camera tests. Now to answer Trevor's question right here uh, about like for ATEM, uh, -E the M the ATM mini at 295, which device do you think is a better value? Obviously right now, nobody can get any of BM stuff anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised I was able to get the stream deck because you can't get a cam link, which I use uh, anywhere right now, unless you want to be gouged. Now, I would say that if you use OBS uh, or Ecamm or OBS Stream Link, Stream, whatever, um, it is, this is a very, very useful tool. Uh, let me go into split so you can see it a little better. I, I think that this is the ultimate control to feel like you're using an ATM when you are using a software-based switcher. But it's, it's really cool in which, uh, especially if you're trying to put on graphics and stuff, um, this is the subscribe loop uh, that I have in order to remind people to subscribe, you know, to make my, to boost my self-esteem. And actually, let me uh, show you this. If I add, uh, okay, I don't have a setting on here to actually show your comments. So I still have to look at the computer for that. That's a bit of a bummer, but I could at least remember to remove your comment uh, with a, a simple click of the button right here. And I could see with a quick eye here as well, oops, sorry, uh, how many viewers are watching right now. I can see I have four viewers and I feel all cool right now. Uh, it looks like I do win over Roger Deakins for you four people. And then I could turn off that subscribe loop. I could uh, throw on uh, or off the episode title uh, that I like to keep on there. I don't know why I always lose uh, a skip a frame or two there. And then I could put on my Instagram. Please, please say hi on the Instagram. That's what I use for messaging for a lot of these things. Woo -woo 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 -woo. Woo -woo -woo. Does that uh, update? Yeah, that updates. It's really cool. And then <laughs> if I want to feel really good about myself, I could um, press a sound effect here. Is that useful for you guys? I don't know. Okay, so I can, I can show hide picture in picture. If I do have a picture in picture, and I could have just pressed this, I don't know why I did that. Uh, I could show in hide uh, and with Ecamm that actually uh, turns into split screen uh, mode instead of just turning that right off. It, it, uh, I'm still learning Ecamm and all the intricacies of it, but let me remove that comment with a single click of the button. So anyway, that's my very, very initial setup. There are a few things that are really cool in here, and so, but I'm fielding questions right now. So please, please, please absolutely uh, ask me questions. I'm gonna show in the app uh, what else you can do. You can customize your icons, which are, it's pretty baller. Uh, create new icon and then you'll see it pop up. Uh, and I gotta switch over to the website screen capture here that there is an icon creator for you right here. Uh, that they have a bunch of icons for. It's it's crazy. So, um, okay, here's another thing. You can control hue lights with this thing. You can control hue lights. Does anybody understand how crazy that is? So if you have a set that is lit by hue lights, you, you know, uh, that your webcam scenes or whatever you're using, you could control hue lights. But anyway, I'm just using the icon for that right now. So that's your, I haven't really played with this in full and I'm not gonna waste your time by uh, experimenting with it right here, right now. But that is pretty damn cool in my book that they include that. Oh, hey, look, it's focusing on my hand. That's autofocus from Sony for, uh, from you. It's, it's very aggressive as us filmmakers like to call things. So my review of this is that it is really cool, $150. It, it is a great buy. And my only complaint is that I wish there were more functions uh, for each of the programs that I use, either OBS or Ecamm in here, including fast forwarding. So anyway, that concludes the 
you know, the actual episode. Now we could just shoot the shit, shoot the, the crap. Uh, just in case there are kids watching, I need to censor myself. But yeah, uh, feel free to ask me questions about this thing. Uh, if you have something you want me to experiment live on air with it, with the software, please chime in. And once again, you don't need to buy this actual hardware. You, if you don't need physical buttons and the comfort that it gives you uh, of actual hardware, you could wirelessly use the iPhone app from Elgato. Now, I do have it here, actually. So I'll pull it up since you guys are still watching. I see all my four viewers are still watching here. So uh, let me pull that up, the stream deck. All right, I hope you guys didn't see my porn collection there. Just kidding. So uh, you could see once I actually have it up, I'll put it on overhead here. Oh, you know what? I actually have to uh, connect to the same Wi-Fi network. So it's Wi-Fi network based. That's one downside of it. Um, the Using a hard wire option sometimes is just way easier. Um, oh, Trevor, you're, you're changing subjects on me. I'll get to you in a little bit, a little bit. So you can see here that um, it's pretty much the same thing right here. It's using a different profile uh, that I made for the phone specifically. So if you're okay with this, uh, put your phone on the stand. It's about $3 for the basic subscription per month and you can save yourself um, a good amount of money if you don't think you'll necessarily be married to this thing for a super long time. I would say, uh, okay, two ninety nine, three, blah, blah, blah. yeah, a couple of years with this thing, and it would be the same as uh, with the uh, the iPhone app subscription. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Trevor is starting to get into different subjects, but um, I guess since nobody's asking questions about this. I'm gonna put this into the side and I put this onto the little stand right here and it locks in decently, but it isn't actually clicked into place. It could fall out if you decide to grab by the stand and run around. So just uh, keep that in mind. And you could get, uh, use, uh, get used to me using this as I answer uh, some questions. Oh, hey, my quality has automatically lowered because my, who's streaming and downloading stuff? on my Wi-Fi, man. Uh, it, okay, yeah, I was trying to use Wi-Fi instead of Ethernet <laughs> uh, to save me the trouble of a okay, uh, cabling an Ethernet cable. But anyway, I will simply answer Trevor's uh, question over here. Uh, and how are you feeling about the Vazen after using it for a while? Well, I only used it for a week, and Marcus will put in his uh, his thoughts as well. The 40 millimeter Vazen, and you guys could take a look at our live stream, sort of in depth first look in the uh, the list of uh, and the Anamorphilia uh, playlist, as well as the film gear test, as well as the live gear stream review. It's everywhere. Uh, but our overall impression is that it is pretty big. It is uh, you know honk -a tonk. It's very front heavy, so it's not really good for all purposes if you're using the Micro Four Thirds system for its compact nature. Um, I'm sure the 28, I will have a very different, uh, you know, opinion about when we do get it from Vazen in order to test out. So, uh, and here I am going to show that I'm hiding this comment. Really cool, right? Now, I'm just going to play around with this a little bit more. Um, and then, uh, actually, just to bring in Trevor. See, I have to go to my computer to choose a comment to show unless I guess, uh, you know, use a plugin or something like that. Uh, okay, uh, it was in my top three pur pur purchases to make before getting the S1H. So I'm still on the fence because of coverage. Um, yeah, if you're getting the S1H, I don't know. I feel like getting a, a lens that's made more for, you know, larger sensor sizes, uh, I know it is expensive, might be more your jam, or you could use an adapter. The thing is those adapters don't necessarily have the same flair, the same looks, the same bokeh. Uh, but I know that a lot of people have had, um, you know, luck adapting projection anamorphic de-squeeze lenses, uh, you know, putting those onto their taking lenses. So you can look at uh, different options other than, you know, the ones that are native. It, it is a bit of trouble though, you're in dual focus and such. So, uh, do we have any questions about the actual stream deck? Hmm? Any questions? Well, maybe we'll just say, uh, well, okay. What, what, Trevor, what, what is Roger Deakins talking about in his live stream? 
you know, the, his, his work is great, but I, I've been a bit out of the loop, stuck at home, going crazy. You know? And why do I still have three viewers if no one's talking? Huh? 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 Okay. Well, anyway, uh, I guess I will wrap it here if nobody has anything else to say. So I'm going to go into subscribe loop right here to remind people in order to subscribe, like, and subscribe. And know that my name is Michael Shu. I'm not just that guy. Some people have referred to that guy that likes to blow up, uh, you know, V-mount batteries or something. I'm that guy that likes to drink tea. I don't do coffee, guys. So this guy, that guy, aka Michael Shu, is logging out right now. So subscribe and like. Tomorrow I'm doing the G7X, a very cool blogging camera review, and why, uh, spoil alert, I might not be keeping it. And uh, later this week, I'll be doing an unboxing and initial test of the A6100 as a $600 A-series, um, A6000 series camera from Sony. Uh, I'm really interested to see how that compares to the higher end A6000 series cameras. And I, I will also be uh, trying to squeeze in Pro Color, EOS HD Pro Color for the Sony cameras as well. And my thoughts about if that it is much more awesome than using the internal chenizzle on the camera, Sony cameras, mirrorless cameras. Uh, the night. Oh, Deacons was going through all the camera setups for 1917. Ah, uh, that must have been fun. I haven't watched 1917 yet. I kind of wanted to see in the theater, but you know, with uh, the toddler and all, uh, and everybody talking about Tiger King. Tiger King was the first thing that we watched while our toddler was napping. Uh, so we got to get to 1917 at some point on my 4K OLED 65 inch screen. So it feels kind of like I'm watching it in theater. Anyway, okay, I've been babbling for too long. So if everybody, and why do I keep on dropping frames? Just because of a comment. Social. No. Subscribe loop. Okay, that's interesting. Ecam and this poor little... Okay, um, Siri thought I talked to it. Anyway, this is what happens in live TV. Weird, weird stuff. Rambling and <laughs> things going off topic. Thank you for joining me for this episode, which I guess my episodes are just half an hour long now. They just are. That's just how they are. So thanks for watching, guys, and please do like and subscribe and see you guys tomorrow and on and on.